Science is magic that works. Kurt Vonnegut, The Cat's Cradle. Hello, and today I want to talk about Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. So let's jump in to the summary. So we have this main character. His name is John. It's not spelt exactly the way you would expect it. Uh, but basically, he's writing this book about the day the world ends, and he's writing a story uh, based on like what happened on the day that this first nu nuclear bomb was dropped. He decides to reach out to the kids of one of the inventors of it, um, and the guy's name is his name is Honecker, and he finds out that one of them, um, his name is Newt, uh, is going to go to the same university as he did, and so he kind of reaches out to him as an alumni or something, um, and he asks about what happened, and uh, Newt tells him a little bit of a story. Um, he finds out that on the day that the bomb was dropped. Uh, the only memory that Newt has is that his father had shown him a cat's cradle with a piece of string on the day that it happened. After this, John travels to the town where they came from, where like this, the scientist had lived with his kids, and he finds out that he had three kids, a son, two sons and a daughter. The Nicker guy is like totally oblivious to people, like all he cares about is work and his discoveries and science and stuff. And so he kind of like has neglected his kids and his daughter ends up having to be the one who raises everyone and takes care of everyone. And uh, one of the sons had worked in a hobby shop, but then he just kind of vanishes. His name is Frank. Uh, and so we kind of get this like sort of setting. We get a little bit of understanding about this family and these people. While we're learning about this scientist, we also discover that he created this thing called Ice-9. And Ice-9 is this sort of crystal. Uh, it's a type of ice. And when, you make, when it touches water, it, it sort of causes all the other water to freeze and come into uh, fr a frozen formation. Uh, like an ice-like formation, but because it's it's ice nine and not regular ice, uh, it has like a higher melting point. And uh, but he's not totally sure about you know what it is, like if it's real, all this stuff. Uh, later on, John is assigned an assignment uh, to write an article about this guy uh, who is living on this island, San Lorenzo. It's this fictional caribbean island and basically all that it has is uh, a dictator there's nothing really there there's no resources maybe there's some sugar uh, but basically there's nothing there but a dictator and some sad people on a <laughs> resource-free island while john john is on the plane to san lorenzo he uh, ends up running into he ends up finding out that um there's some people on the plane who are actually the Honecker's kids. And so he finds Newt, the guy who he originally communicated with, and also uh, his sister. And they are uh, on the plane as well, and they have some conversations. Uh, while on the plane, uh, John learns about the sort of national religion of this island. And it's called Boko Nonism. And uh, it's this like Calypso sort of religion. Um, and it's written in all these books. And he kind of like learns a little bit about the religion. Uh, and he kind of also he kind of discovers that it's the sort of a secret religion of the island, uh, but people are supposed to not believe in it because if they do, then they can get murdered on this hook. He also later on sort of discovers that everyone believes in this religion. Uh, also, he finds out about this. He is looking at this pamphlet uh, about the island, and there's this this woman on the cover of it, and he's like he just is in love with her. Uh, when they arrive at the airport. Uh, they get out of the plane and there's kind of the ceremony and the dictator of the island is like doing this sort of speech thing uh, and he passes out uh, and he gets taken away. And then we also find out that the dictator sort of a main assistant is is Frank, who's the third Honecker child, uh, the one who had run away uh, earlier on. While all this stuff is happening, um, Frank, who is the, the third son, and also the assistant to the dictator, he asks John if he'll take over as being the kind of commander and the dictator of the island. Uh, John is resistant, but then Frank says that actually, well, you know that, that woman that you kind of were in love with from the pamphlet, well, you can marry her if you become the dictator. And so he, uh, John sort of reluctantly accepts the role of uh, becoming the new dictator of the island. He also finds out that the hook is hardly ever used at all. Um, it's just a thing to keep people in line, but really the religion is kind of what everyone believes in is kind of, you know, generally accepted. There's these, th I think it's called like the 100 Martyr Martyrs uh, ceremony. And so this is a, an event that's occurring and it's a sort of a, a ceremony. And while it's happening, we find out that the dictator has kind of died and he actually ate Ice-9. Uh, and so he's frozen. And so um, John and the, the uh, siblings, they go down and they try and clean up the mess um, with fire. But then, of course, the dictator is still frozen uh, in his room. And while they're doing the ceremony, um, there's this air show. And one of the jets 
crashes into the castle or the fortress and it breaks open and the dictator falls out and he's frozen with ice nine he falls into the water it basically freezes over the entire world um and it turns into ice there's all these storms on the horizon uh john uh the main character and like mona his his sort of wife he gets to have uh because he's the new dictator uh they sort of find this escape bunker and they climb in there and there's some food there's some water uh there's like a fan uh, there's some books and so john kind of reads up and learns about bokononism and uh they kind of are living sadly <laughs> uh in this bunker after a few days they decide to uh go outside into the world so they look out and they see like some of the storms and stuff have faded away a little bit and so they go out onto the surface uh, and they see that like mostly everyone has died everything is frozen like just life is life is chaos john and mona are walking and they find this mass sort of grave where all these people have died of ice nine mona seeing what everyone all of her country people have done uh she also eats some ice nine and dies this leaves john by himself uh, but luckily, he runs into some of the like other Americans, like the the siblings uh, that he had he had met on the plane, uh, and he goes and lives with them for a while. And they are living in this cave, and uh, this is where John is writing the book in this cave. Uh, John, the main character, and Newt, uh, the guy from the beginning, they're having this conversation, and Newt and John are saying talking about how like they would just want to climb to the tallest mountain on the island and they want to kill themselves but right they don't have anything to bring with them to like sort of make their climb to the top of the mountain symbolic and while they're driving um john sees out the window he sees this man and he's writing something in a book and he thinks it's boko known and so he goes and talks to him and the guy is talking about like you know how it's absurd and he's finished writing re his religion and he says like if i was a younger person i would climb to the top of the mountain with these books and i would you know you kill myself in this fashion and so that's kind of the story that's the plot the summary here there's some interesting ideas in this book i think one is like the dangers or the risks of science and so this is written about a nuclear bomb but also ice nine is the scientific discovery and it's just like just because we can do something does that mean that we should and science has these risks um that can maybe it can make life better and it can make life worse and if you're looking at the events of the last year or so then uh, maybe science can make things actually worse instead of making them better another idea that's interesting is is just the use of of religion to like help people get through maybe their terrible lives or dissatisfying lives uh and that's what the spoken known as um, religion is which is kind of persistent throughout the book and john uh comes to accept it by the end of the book and so it's just this kind of idea the set of ideas that makes life more tolerable it makes it easier to accept what's happening and go along with things and and but the whole joke about the religion is that it is a joke and so you know it's a joke but it still works it still makes people happy it still gives them some meaning also, this this religion has talks about uh, people being connected to each other. It talks about sort of purpose and meaning um, of these connections or of these peoples connected to each other. And so that's kind of an interesting idea because it kind of is important to the story, right? Because John ends up connecting with these people and then he survives because of these people. And it's related to sort of what the religion suggests about life and how to approach things newt who had been the son who had uh his father had shown him the cat's cradle like he talks about like meaninglessness a little bit because his father had shown him this cat's cradle and he talks about how he looked in it and there's no cat there's no cradle but it's called the cat's cradle and so it's kind of just like it's sort of meaningless and it's also too like that was the only game that his father ever played like his father was a, a pure scientist he only cared about rationality and solving problems and so it's just it's kind of like a this this departure from like this is the game but the game is meaningless and like but there's all these other games um that the father is uh involved in like making bombs also there's kind of like this idea about the lack of free will or the lack of control we have over our lives because maybe john doesn't believe in um like sort of a determinism or the lack of free will uh in the beginning of the story but as the story goes along he like sees how he's connected to all these people and like how they're kind of determining his fate and so it kind of is like an argument uh for the lack of free will about fate and destiny uh, but I would say that any fiction by necessity requires that because like when we tell our like a story about what's happened, like we have these events that had significance and these 
significant events influence the behavior and direction and stuff. And so it's like all of these things are kind of connected together and they flow. And so that's my review and sort of my thoughts on the book Cat's Cradle. This book was really something that I enjoyed. It was really uh, influential to me uh, at one point in my life. I read it a long time ago, but I, I liked it so much that I wrote actually a quote on the wall. I think it says something like, who needs games? Who needs made up games when there's already so many real games? And so this is just something that has has meant something to me uh, in the past. And so, um, yeah, I thought it was a good read. I love this book. I would recommend reading it. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of the book or this video in the comments below. If you found this video entertaining or informative, click that like button and uh, subscribe if you're curious about hearing about my book reviews in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll talk next time. Goodbye.